<laughs> Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's darkest and most powerful tragedies, filled with iconic lines that delve into ambition, fate and morality. In this video, we'll explore 17 key quotes from Macbeth, breaking them down with quick explanations to help you grasp their significance and timeless relevance. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. This opening line, spoken by the witches, sets the tone for the entire play. It reflects the theme of appearances versus reality, showing how things that seem good can actually be bad, and vice versa. The line hints at the moral confusion and deception that will follow. If you can look into the seeds of time, and say which grain will grow and which will not, speak then to me. Banco speaks this line to the witches, asking them to reveal their prophecies for him. He uses the metaphor of seeds to represent the potential for future events, indicating his curiosity, but also his scepticism about their power. Stars, hide your fires, let not light see my black and deep desires. Macbeth speaks this line after hearing that Malcolm, Duncan's son, is named heir to the throne. He is already plotting his path to kingship, but he wants to keep his dark ambitions hidden from the world, and even from himself. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. Lady Macbeth advises Macbeth to appear innocent while hiding his true intentions. This quote encapsulates the theme of deception and the contrast between outward appearances and hidden motives which reoccurs throughout the play. I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is none. Macbeth argues with Lady Macbeth here, expressing his hesitation about murdering King Duncan. He insists that doing anything more than what is honourable makes one less than human, but his resolve will soon be broken. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. As Macbeth prepares to murder Duncan, he hallucinates a dagger leading him to the crime. The vision represents his conflicted state of mind and the pull of fate, foreshadowing the bloodshed and guilt that will follow. Methought I heard a voice cry, sleep no more, Macbeth does murder sleep. After killing Duncan, Macbeth becomes paranoid and imagines hearing voices. This quote signifies the beginning of his psychological unravelling. Macbeth believes that by murdering Duncan, he has also murdered his own peace and ability to rest. Will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? Macbeth laments the irreversible nature of his crime feeling that even the ocean couldn't wash away his guilt. This imagery of blood represents his overwhelming sense of remorse and the stain of his actions on his conscience. What's done is done. Lady Macbeth uses this phrase to comfort Macbeth after Duncan's murder, trying to ease his guilt by saying that the past cannot be changed. Ironically, this attitude contrasts sharply with a growing sense of guilt that will eventually consume her. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. The witches chant these famous lines as they brew a potion, symbolising the dark forces at play in the story. Their magic stirs chaos and drives Macbeth towards his eventual downfall, showing the consequences of meddling with fate. Macbeth shall never vanquished be until great Burnham Wood to high Dunsinane Hill shall come against him. The witches give Macbeth this prophecy, making him believe he is safe as long as the forest doesn't move. However, it's fulfilled when Malcolm's army uses branches from Burnham Wood to camouflage themselves, signalling that Macbeth's downfall is near. Out, damned spot, out, I say! Lady Macbeth, now consumed by guilt, imagines bloodstains on her hands that she cannot wash away. This line reflects her mental breakdown as she relives the horror of Duncan's murder, proving that guilt has driven her to madness. 
tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. After learning of his wife's death, Macbeth delivers this famous soliloquy, contemplating the meaningless passage of time. He expresses a sense of despair and futility, realising that life is nothing more than a series of empty, repetitive days leading to inevitable death. Out, out, brief candle. Macbeth likens life to a brief candle, a fragile and fleeting thing that is easily extinguished. This line, part of his famous soliloquy, reflects his deep nihilism and the futility of human existence in the face of death. Turn, hellhound, turn! Macduff confronts Macbeth with this fierce line, calling him a hellhound for his evil deeds. It marks the showdown between the two, where Macduff will avenge his family and bring Macbeth's tyrannical rule to an end. I bear a charmed life, which must not yield to one of woman born. Macbeth speaks this line confidently in battle, believing he's invincible due to the witch's prophecy. However, his sense of invulnerability is shattered when he learns that Macduff was not born of woman in the usual way, highlighting the witch's deceptive wordplay. Lay on, Macduff, and damned be him that first cries, Hold! Enough! In his final moments, Macbeth defiantly faces Macduff in battle. Even knowing he's doomed, Macbeth refuses to surrender, showing his unyielding pride and determination to fight to the bitter end. This quote is actually from Hamlet, but it's included here for thematic resonance. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. While spoken by Queen Gertrude in Hamlet, it echoes Macbeth's themes of deception and guilt. Characters who overact in their innocence often reveal deeper truths. This concept reinforces the idea that those who strive for power may mask their true intentions. These quotes from Macbeth reveal the intricate layers of ambition, guilt and betrayal woven into Shakespeare's timeless tragedy. If you enjoyed exploring these powerful lines, you might also like this video exploring the most important quotes from Hamlet. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe as it really helps me out. And until next time, keep unravelling the magic of theatre.